briefing of content, and then we'll look at the process of uh, what, what Colin did. He began with the state, did he not? So, first of all, uh, the, the feeling of the state, nervousness. And what Colin did was to spend some time uh, accessing that state. So here's eliciting a state, asking about it, when does it occur, what, where in your body, what is that? And so accessing the state, so he has something real to deal with. And so the very first thing was the accessing of the state. And then he started asking the causation question, um, <coughs> how do you do this? What causes this? And Colin is now listening very carefully for the words, and the first word was, uh, uh, the first words out here was, they're not getting it. And then when he asked the cause question, I can't get it. I can't get it. And then the next frame was, I'm not good enough. And the next frame was, I'm aware that my self-esteem is connected to my performance. So that was the next frame up. My self-esteem is connected to my form of performance. And then the words that came out is, uh, I need to do it well. I need to do it right. Now we're getting some of the real language, the real belief behind all the other beliefs that's really driving that. Colin then did something. He did framing. He said, so, it's not about you. It's not about them. It's about you. So right at this level, he sets, a, he, he sets a frame to classify what's going on. It's not about them. We thought it was about them. They're not getting it. Now he fr sets the frame. It's, it's not about them. It's about you. At that point, Colin is doing a lot of repetition, uh, repeating back, summarizing back as a mirror. So he's using his coaching skills as he's training. <coughs> and he summarizes all the words that he's heard Conrad say. And as he repeats it, it just goes in there. So the next piece is, uh, as he feeds back, I have to, you have to do it right, I have to do it right, I have to do it first time. I have to hit a home run every time up. Mm -hmm. So now we're hitting, hearing a metaphor inside there. I have to hit a home run, I have to do it first time every time. Colin feeds that right back. And he starts to check e ecology. Let's go with that. If, if. Uh, Let's go with that. So he sets that frame. <coughs> Let's just run with that frame. What if that frame is true? Does, does that work? Uh, uh, does that, how does that help you? Was his question. How does that help you? And does that work uh, if you have to get it right every time the first time? Um, the next jump up was, uh, was uh, uh, what does this do for you? And the next, so the next level was, it puts me on the edge. I've used this to push me to my edge to bring on the game, uh, but I realize that this pushing also messes things up. So now we're at the next level. Yeah, the edge, so here's the positive intention behind these beliefs about doing it first time, right time. So working with that one at that level, um, so so the shift occurred at the next at the next one. Uh, uh, about around belief and testing it, uh, would you be more? Uh, 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 would it bring more comfort? And, and said no. So what do you believe now? And that's when Conrad said, uh, I hear. I, I guess so. And Colin said, Guess so. And he said, I know so. And Colin then said, Did you hear that shift? And he said, I believe so. So. So there was, there was a shift right here about how useful this was, because there was an ecology check, there was a quality control at this point, and, and then the moving. So, so what belief? And Conrad now is, is uh, putting in a new belief at, at my own pace. So at my own pace, I can do that. Uh, did you have that belief before you walked up? Uh, you had the belief before, get it right. So now another metaphor comes up, and now it's the board metaphor. And the board metaphor, uh, as Conrad talked about, breaking through something, and how he had used uh, getting it right, doing it right the first time to break through, and the, the physiology of that. And so Colin asked, what's going to be written on the board? What's going to be written on this side? What's going to be written on that side? If on this side, what's, what's written is, I have to get it right first time, on the other side is what? 
and I'll keep the words, trust myself, uh, I can do this. And so Colin then says, let's rehearse this. And in just a moment, we're going to give you the chance to, and so he repeats all the words back, giving Conrad the opportunity to experience that, uh, imagine breaking through that, and saying no to that belief. And, and so now we have an induction. So we have, so, so the next step up is the induction. And the induction is going to be an induction using all the words that Conrad has offered him. And, uh, and so uh, Colin now is using a lot of the hypnotic language and the induction language, and inviting him in his mind or physically, because I noticed that you like to move. And so uh, giving him the chance to find his way to do that, uh, to, to break through that, and at the count of three. After that is the is the testing of it, so where's the nervousness? Mm -hmm. And what's now here? And you're ready to say yes to this. So that's what I saw and heard content-wise. In terms of uh, rapport with Conrad, it was a rapport. So we saw, we saw the standing together, the moving together, the voice, the volume, we saw a lot of rapport. In terms of engagement, did he engage Conrad? So the engagement of, of really feeding back his word, of, of being present to him, the induction of state. Did you see induction of state? This is right from the beginning. Not waiting, but getting nervousness. States are just states. Emotions are just emotions. And it makes sense somehow. And, and probably has a positive intent behind it. So let's just let, let's, let's go in. The, the nervousness is not the problem. That's just a symptom. So that's why, as neurosemanticists, we, we're ready to embrace any emotion. And, and that's it. So induction of state. We saw several states induced. First, first the state I'm coming from, and then states that came from higher levels of the mind. Um, the positive attention state, the what I'm trying to do state, and then the comfort state, the calm state, the trusting state. So we saw lots of states uh, induced. Uh, managing semantic space. Did you see that? So when, when Conrad is doing this, is Colin doing that? Is Colin facilitating and enabling that space to be used in that way? And being on the edge? Um, effective use of voice. So we heard questioning, just exploration. We heard some matter of fact on the voice. Oh, so where's this? What's that? We heard some confirmation. Oh, right. Oh, good. Well done. And then we heard some induction voice. We heard the voice really change for induction. Every time, uh, three times call, that I counted, call it fed back and did summary that helped to deepen the state and secure the state. So the use of voice framing. Well, framing what it is. So it's not about them. It's about you. Framing, does this really work? So setting different frames along the way. So, so the, the benchmarking skills for presentation even applies when you're demonstrating. Which should be the whole thing tomorrow. So everything you know about these skills, doing it um, even in the demonstration when you're working with one person in addition to the whole group. You train best by coaching. And those who've been through meta coaching, this gives you a real heads up and real advantage. Trained best by coaching because it brings out the, in the client if it's one or if it's many. If you watch Colin really carefully, he, he was just embracing the nervousness. In fact, the first time Conrad said, I'm nervous, Con what did Colin say? Good. So paradoxical, good. So, was that good? Yes. All right.